All right, fourth graders, this is um, Thursday's Bible, um, and we are talking about Nicodemus. Um, we're continuing our study in John in chapter three, um, so make sure you have your Bible out, and there's no notes for this today, um, so just go ahead and sit back and relax, um, grab a comfy, fill, comfy pillow, maybe your favorite drink, and we can read the Bible together. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pray. Dear God, I thank you for this day, Lord, and I just thank you for these fourth graders who are at home, Lord, and who are learning more about you, God. I just pray that you would bless them during this time, Lord, um, that you would just give them wisdom and understanding of your word, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would continue to grow them in love and in faith, God. I pray that they would be a light to those around them, Lord, that you would give them an opportunity to share your love to one another. I pray all this in your name. Amen. All right, so we're going to be in John chapter 3. I'm going to go ahead and read and, and kind of stop and take some time to talk about certain things. Um, but we're going to learn about Nicodemus. Now, I'm not sure if you remember last year, um, but the fifth graders performed Nick at night, and now they're sixth grade. And so this um, chapter in the Bible is actually what that play is based upon, right? Um, so if you remember, it was a man who was a Pharisee, um, and he was really curious to see who this Jesus was because as we all know that Pharisees were religious leaders um, back then and the Pharisees only were implementing the laws and the beliefs that they thought uh, were true about God and what he said. Uh, but it wasn't exactly what Jesus was saying. So that was the difference was that they needed to actually listen to Jesus and his words um, so that they could be able to share to other people the truth about Jesus. And so Nicodemus was very curious about who Jesus was um, so he snuck out to go meet with Jesus, and if you remember in the play last year, um, he ended up sneaking out to see Jesus and meet with him, um, and so that's what this chapter is actually about. So let's start in chapter 3, verse 1. It says, There was a man from the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to him at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform these signs you do unless God were with him. So at this point, Nicodemus is hearing all about who Jesus is. He's hearing about the miracles that Jesus is doing. Um, and so he's wondering, who is this man? He must be somebody because there's no way people can just show up and start performing miracles, right? There's no way somebody can come in and, and destroy a whole temple and then rebuild it in three days. So he wanted to know who Jesus was. So verse 3, Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Um, verse 4 says, How can anyone be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked him. Can he enter his mother's womb a second time and be born? So that's the first time Nicodemus is hearing the phrase to be born again. And you and I know what be to be born again means is to have new life in Christ, right? So we have our actual our birthday, okay, which is the day that we were born, we were brought into this earth. And then we also have our spiritual birthday, which is the day that we accepted Jesus into our lives, right? And so we call that being born again, because that's the day that we said we want Jesus to come into our heart and we want Jesus to um, be the ruler of our lives. And so Jesus says um, in verse five, truly I tell you, unless someone is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Whatever is born of the flesh is flesh, and whatever is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I told you that you must be born again. The wind blows where it pleases, and you hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everybody born of the spirit. So basically, Jesus is giving an example that, that we can see wind happening because we can see the trees blowing. Um, if you're at the beach and you, and you the wind, the waves are crashing harder, right? Um, but we, and we can feel it as far as like something blowing in our face or we can feel it on our skin, right? But we can't actually see the wind move, right? We just see the effects of the wind, right? Which are other things moving. Um, and so Jesus is saying that the spirit, right? So the Holy Spirit is exactly like that. Okay, we can't necessarily see the Holy Spirit, but once we receive Jesus into our lives, we also receive the Holy Spirit. So we can't see it, but he is actually inside of us. and He's the reason that we have the power to follow Jesus. We have the power to, you know, do what's right. We have the power to please, um, you know, God and all that we do and to love each other. Okay, and so that's kind of the illustration that that Jesus gives Nicodemus. Um, in verse 9 it says, How can these things be? asked Nicodemus. 
Verse 10, are you a teacher of Israel and don't know these things? Jesus replied, truly I tell you, we speak what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but you do not accept our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you don't believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, right? To condemn means to to scold the world, to make sure everyone gets in trouble. But he, anyone who does not believe is already condemned because he has not believed in the name of the one and only Son of God. Meaning that God didn't come down, didn't send Jesus to come down and tell everybody, you're awful, you're doing the wrong things, um, you're not going to be going into heaven, right? He came down to tell them, let me show you what it's supposed to be like when you accept me into your heart. Let me show you what it's supposed to be like when you talk to your neighbor, let me show you what it's supposed to look like when you love somebody the way that I have loved you, right? Um, and so that's what we, as believers, are the things that we learn, right? We accept Jesus into your heart. We want to learn more about who Jesus is and how we can do that. Um, and there's definitely tons of things you can do in fourth grade, right? Um, the way you treat your friends, the way you talk to them, the way you treat your parents, the way you treat your siblings, the way you treat your cousins. Um, those can all be a reflection of how Jesus is to us, right? And how Jesus loves us. And so he is the best example to show you how to do that. Um, and so verse 18, it says, anyone who believes in him is not condemned and i just read that so let's go down to 19. this is the judgment the light has come into the world and people loved darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil um what that means is that we are born with sin okay um so when we are just living in sin meaning we're not doing what we're supposed to do we're doing the opposite of what god has asked us to do um it's just it's you know it's easier to do that because that's what we were born with um, but once we accept Jesus into our hearts, we realize that we want to make that decision to do what God has asked us to do. So let's go on to verse 20. It says, For everyone who does evil hates the light and avoids it, so that his deeds may not be exposed. But anyone who lives by the truth comes to the light, so that his works may be shown to be accomplished by God. Um, and so basically Jesus is telling Nicodemus that, once you receive me into your life, you can go into heaven, right? Uh, and if you live by the truth, which is what God's word is, um, then your light will be shown, okay? And it'll be shown through your works. It'll be shown, meaning it'll be shown through your actions, through the words that you say. Um, so I really want you guys to think about the words that you've been using lately. I know you're not at school and I know you're not you know, hanging out with a ton of people, but a lot of you are using social media, a lot of you are using um, technology to talk to one another, um, and think about what type of words are you using? Are you using words to glorify God? Are your actions glorifying God? Is it exactly how Jesus would respond to something? Um, and you know, and it's going to take some time to, to um, you know, really realize every single time but be mindful of of what we do and how it needs to be a reflection of of jesus so i just want to encourage you today to um live like jesus did to love jesus as much as he loves you and to just help, ask the holy spirit to help you to use um encouraging words to use um you know do actions that would glorify god in all that you do all right fourth graders i'm praying for you um we love you we miss you and i hope that this was helpful for you in understanding um John chapter 3. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye.